Howdy folks, my name's Christian and welcome to Bullish on Farming. Today you're looking at a field full of bales. I uh, got out yesterday, placed these bales, getting ready for our winter bale grazing program. Want to talk a little bit here on how we set it up and think you guys might uh, find it kind of neat, especially if you get really cold temperatures and a lot of snow. So uh, that's the barn that the cattle track back to always for water. And there's the heated trough up there. It's yellow if you can see it. We have a couple hot lines that we put that keeps the, the cows from going left in the lane and right to the uh, wilderness section that we have over there. So it's nice and easy and it keeps the cattle commuting back and forth for water, which keeps them active. And uh, we like that. So as they walk all the way up here, this is the gate that they walk through that stays open and they open up to a field. Now to start, what we do is uh, just ration off two days or uh, one day or two days worth of bales. And so you see one, two bales right here. So I'd have an electric fence that comes hot from there and cuts up and sections off these two bales. And that pretty much gives us, you know, this corner of the field which might be a tight paddock if you were grazing pasture, but now that we're talking about winter bale grazing, the ground being rock hard, uh, we're able to keep um, a higher stock density and a lower uh, air, uh, smaller area for longer periods of time. And so you can see how the spacing between the bales, um, it's about 35 yards from that bale to that bale. And the reason why I did that is that for you to have enough space when you put up your electric line in between these two rows, let's see if I can fit both those bales, right down the middle here, you need enough space on that side. So when the cattle are mobbing around it, we're going to have 40 head here, folks. Uh, they're not brushing up against that hot line. So that's something that you want to think of in advance because it makes you know, the progression through your whole field so much easier if you think about these type of things first. And I did it last year for the first time and we loved it, so we're doing it again. Now last year I measured out equal space, equal parts for one day sections throughout the whole field. And I did that with some stakes and measured them out just by marching through the field, sectioning by yards. This year I just really freestyled it. And the reason why I did that is because of the snow. I can't see where I placed bales last year. It would have been great if I put a post in those residue paths that the bales leave behind so I would be able to know where those bales were. But by freestyling it, I'm hoping, you know, the odds of me landing on the same spot that I placed it last year uh, is pretty slim. It might happen, but you know, even if it's right beside the last bale from last year, we'll take it because any new section is what we want to target. This is a higher impact regenerative method in my experience. And those residue paths from each bale, although they spring back nice and fertile uh, that spring. So, you know, after this winter, that immediate spring, they do bounce back, but they're not 100% um, vegetation coverage. Okay, you're going to have some carbon smothering there, and that's just part of the process. You can mitigate that by spreading it around with a pitchfork, which I talk about in previous videos. And that will help, you know, the desired forages that you're looking for take in that first year. But it's a higher impact method and you have to be willing to invest time in these small sections. So this winter, that bale is gonna offer our cattle feed. And then once the cattle are done with it, they've done all the work, the intensive work to leave a nice fertility pat right there about you know one sixth of that bale will go to waste and sometimes it could be a bit more which is why you have to manage the grazing of their bales folks don't be scared to let them scoop up what's there on the ground and what's left becomes all carbon matter to mix with that manure and you know conceals the seed all within the carbon and creates a fertility pot to restore that section of your field and so, you know, how long do you keep your cattle in the field when you're bale grazing? If you just got a few head, you know, you could probably just bring out a bale whenever you need it. But this is uh, set up in a methodical way. So I'll explain that. 
Uh, we got eight bales wide on the field and the spacing between these bales is 25 yards apart, okay? The spacing between the rows is larger than the spacing between bales in each row. And the reason is, you know, if I open up a two section, a two day section, that includes those two bales and that two, those two bales. So I can just put a wire in between the field uh, right in the halfway mark, because there's another four bales down that way. And then when I have my splitting line coming right through here, they got a nice section to commute back and forth between the bales. And, you know, as they travel between the bales, that's a nice uh, aisle that they fertilize. And then as they travel between the bales and back to the waterer, you have a constant, uh, consistent pattern uh, covering your field. And so we got eight bales wide, one row, two row, three rows, four rows, five rows, six rows, seven rows, eight rows. I know you guys can't make it out. So that's eight bales by eight rows. That's 64 bales in one field. And this is about a 56, or sorry, five to six acre field. And so if the cattle are eating about two bales a day, uh, and we got 64 bales in here, you got about a month's worth of time in this field. So when we're mob grazing a field during summer on pasture, um, we would never be on a field for a month's time. Never. Not on this farm. Um, but because we're winter bale grazing, we're able to accommodate our animals with this field for about a month's time. And that'll be a, the, the amount of time that it takes for them to consume the feed. So that would be a good general rule of thumb in my experience is with the general spacing rule of 25 to 50 yards between your bales, how many bales can you fit in your field? And then the amount of bales you could fit in your field, you just time out with how long it takes for your cattle to consume those bales. And that's how long those cattle stay in your field. Now that's a very general loose rule. Uh, and I would say if you're evaluating daily, you determine whether or not that works for you. Uh, the twine on the bales, I keep those on until the day I feed them or the day before. Okay, keeping the twine on those bales keeps it nice and tight, packed good, and I find that the bales last better through the wind storms and snowstorms that you're going to get through the season. We're in Canada here, so we get, you know, down to minus 30, blistering winds, and uh, a lot of snow. So we can get like three feet of snow out here which is why it's great already having the bales all positioned. Now, you know, those of you who've worked with electric fencing before, uh, you'll have no problem figuring it out. Uh, but I'll just say briefly, you know, uh, sectioning these out is so crucial because you just don't want the cattle to go out and start, you know, playing around with these bales. You know how they are and how they like to use them as scratch posts, okay? I recommend keeping one to two day sections because that keeps your animals focused on consuming the bales and not playing with extra stuff uh, and scooping up what they're rationed and make sure that it's more than enough folks because when you're in the winter time cattle can lose conditioning quick if they don't have the right amount of feed and that is the most efficient way in my experience to consume feed but also leave enough residue for uh, regenerative purposes. And so, you know, with the cattle always tracking back, I'm looking into this field how the cattle will move. As the days go by, and you know, two bales, two bales. So we get about four days out of each row. Every four days, the cattle march forward to the next row, sweep across, march forward to the next row, sweep across. And that gives us just over a month. Then we have another field over there with a gate right through this bush line. And we'll be doing the exact same thing there. And they'll be marching back. And we actually got a lane right through that bush. It's a trail. And they can march right back to the water. Or if we wanted, we could even have them come back through this field and back to the water. But you know what, folks? Cattle in the wintertime with a lot of snow, they, uh, their water consumption goes down. There are some days where they never even come back for water. They'll just lick the snow. And bedding, I suppose we should touch upon. Uh, which is also another multi-purpose of all this uh, winter bale grazing feeding is that all of these residue pats 
Although they're very good for the fertile in the spring, they also serve as bedding through the winter. And so every day they get fresh bedding after they've mobbed those bales. And of course, as the snow comes on, it powders over and you know, the bales from like two weeks ago are covered by snow, but you always have recent bales that have been consumed, which leave you with a nice hay residue blob that serves as bedding. And so our straw bill is virtually zero during the winter. We keep our cattle on the land, moving, recycling the matter in between their hooves through the snow, sweeping across landscape, interacting with an open range and living how nature designed cattle to live. And you know, we're not against any other way of raising cattle, but this is how we're enthusiastic about raising our animals. And we're excited to share it here. Because other than being out west, when I was farming in Alberta, I haven't seen really anybody out in Ontario be doing this. And we got great weather for it. You just gotta be willing to be on the farm and do the extra work. And you know, if you wanna be spreading some of these residue, residue pats in the spring, that's some muscle work, but I did it this year and it paid off for us. So looking forward to uh, sharing more about this program, guys. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. I wanna thank you for stopping by and God bless you all. See you on the next one.